Hey everybody, welcome to Web Wellness University with Dr. Osborne. Today we're going to be covering, diving into a very important topic. We're going to be talking about the five critical elements for healthy gut function. Now you hear so many people online talking about leaky gut, leaky gut this, leaky gut that. Well, what is leaky gut? In order to understand it properly, you really have to understand what elements make up the gut barrier. So I want to dive in a little bit to that today. Now there are five critical elements for healthy gut function. Number one is something called the GALT, G-A-L-T. That stands for gastro-associated lymphoid tissue. Then we have tight junctions, and I'm going to show you an image here in just a minute of these different things. The tight junctions seal the gut. Then you have mucosal IgA. Mucosal IgA are the antibodies produced by your gut that work like handcuffs. They help bind bad guys so you can poop them out. And then you have good friendly bacteria, also known as your probiotics or your microbiome. And then we have just above the small intestine up north, just a little bit, we have the stomach. And that stomach acid is very, very critical for protecting us from potential infections. It's very important for digesting proteins and amino acids. It's very important for mineral absorption. And so very, very critical. These five barriers you need to understand. Okay, on to the next slide. What this is, is this is a diagram of what I was just talking about. So what you've got here is a basically an anatomical reference. This diagram represents the cellular aspects of the small intestine. So the lumen is the hole or the tube of the intestine. So all this white space out here is the tube and then this is the cellular lining. So all these little pockets. And so if you've ever heard uh, somebody talking about the cells in the small intestine, well that's what we're looking at here. Now there are different things and different functions that are important. These are called epithelial cells and I'm going to point a few things out. Number one, I said earlier, five critical barriers, GALT, the GALT, the gastro-associated lymphoid tissues, part of the GALT are these things here called Peyer's patches. These are conglomerations where your white blood cells hang out very, very aggressively in case a threat should penetrate your gut lining. So these Peyer's patches are, are basically, again, conglomerations of white blood cells. But then you also have white blood cells that kind of hang out underneath the lining of the gut. These are called dendritic cells. They're types of white blood cells and they look for bad guys, particularly things like gluten, right? Then what we have in the second barrier, we have these tight junctions. Now the tight junctions are the linings between each cell. So you can see each one of these represents a cell and the tight junction is an anchoring protein that connects the two cells so that there's not a gap in between them. So those are called tight junctions. And we'll talk about what disrupts those here in just a minute. And then we have what are called secretory IgA. These are those antibodies that I was telling you about. Now, you see right here where it says goblet cell, and it's a different color than all the other cells. Goblet cells secrete mucus. That's their job. So the snot that's produced that helps coat your GI tract is made by these goblet cells. Now, within these goblet cells, you secrete mucus, but you also secrete IgA. That's why its name is S-I-G-A. The S stands for secretory. So very important. Again, these antibodies are very important to prevent infection, to block things from penetrating your gut lining. Again, one of the critical barriers. Then we have the, micro, uh, the microbiome. And so you'll see up here it says commensal bacteria. That's what all these little green things are. That's all the good bacteria that kind of live around and in your lumen of your intestine. That's your microbiome. And those bacteria make chemicals that talk to your immune system and tell it how to behave properly. They help you digest your food. They help with a number of different functions inside your GI tract. And so they're very critical. And then again, as I said earlier, we have stomach acid. Now this image does not show stomach acid. This, is, this image is of the small intestine. So if we go further north, we know the stomach secretes an, a layer or a, 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 a secretion of acid and that that acid is important for you to be able to break down your food, absorb minerals, absorb vitamins like vitamin B12, uh, absorb things like calcium and magnesium and zinc and iron and chromium and selenium. So very, very critical because you need those nutrients in order to heal and repair your gut. And if your stomach acid is compromised, in essence, if you're popping Tums and Rolaids and Zantac or Tagamet or Nexium, you're compromising one of the five critical barriers. And that's why I want you to understand what they are. So now if those barriers are compromised, this is what happens. We get a leaky gut. Now leaky gut, when those barriers are compromised, now things that were in your gut lumen, the particles from bacteria, 
uh, fungus, potential parasites, potential proteins that are dangerous to your body, the things that are in plants. Sometimes we, even when we eat healthy foods, there are dangerous things in our healthy foods. And, and if our gut's barrier is breached, those dangerous things can leak in. That's what leaky gut is. And so these chemicals and toxins can leak through. They access your bloodstream. That creates immune abnormalities, increased food allergies, autoimmune pains start to drive or arrive from this. So all that being said, now that you kind of understand those five barriers and you understand gut function, let's move on to what causes leaky gut. These are the known causes of leaky gut, and there are a number of different things. This is not intended to be the, the ultimate comprehensive list, but I want to give you some very, very common things that you're probably being exposed to on a regular basis that can absolutely cause a leaky gut, including food allergies, potatoes, gluten, GMO or genetically modified foods, plastics, pesticides. This is why it's so important to eat organic. This is why it's so important to not eat out of or drink out of plastics. Aggressive exercise. Now I'm not talking about you know high intensity interval training. I'm talking about exercise until you vomit, that type of aggressive exercise. And then we have different medications. I've shown you in a number of videos how some medications actually cause celiac disease. Some medications rip a hole in your gut lining like ibuprofen or steroids or non steroidal anti-inflammatories, they all can tear a hole in your gut lining. Antibiotics can create a leaky gut. Infection can create a leaky gut. So all these things together combined, right? Imagine kind of where your triggers are coming from because if you've got multiple aspects of this diagram at play in your gut, it's gonna be really, really hard to overcome. Everybody's always talking about take glutamine or take this supplement or take that supplement. And yeah, supplements can be very helpful and very important in recovery, However, they should not be your priority. Your priority should be to remove these triggers. So that's it, right? Recommendations for leaky gut. What do we do? The number one most important thing you can do is eliminate triggers. doesn't matter what supplement you're on. If you're not eliminating triggers, you're not going to get rid of the leaks. You're just going to keep coming back to it over and over and over again. Number two, the number most important thing you can do is read and apply the 30-day protocol from No Grain, No Pain. It is, in essence, part of what it is, is a leaky gut diet helping you find and eliminate the triggers. So if you haven't read No Grain, No Pain, if you don't have your copy, head over to Barnes & Noble or Amazon and pick up your copy and make sure you start applying Chapter 7 and Chapter 8. That 30-day protocol will take your gut a very, very long way. And then lastly, some recommendations for leaky gut. Now, these are su supplemental support recommendations. So again, these aren't your priority. These are your secondary component. So use of supplements for gut barrier function. Number one, biotic defense. Why biotic defense is a probiotic? What does it do? It helps to replenish and it helps to support your microbiome's reestablishment. So one, remember, one of the barriers of your gut is your microbiome. Number two is L-glutamine. Why L-glutamine? Because L-glutamine is the fuel source for the cells in your small intestine. It's what they use to generate energy. And if you don't have adequate quantities of this particular agent, those cells starve to death and leaky gut continues to perpetuate. Number three, immune shield. What is immune shield? Immune shield is a surrogate antibody formula. What does that mean? That means if your IgA levels are compromised, if your mucus lining is compromised and you don't make enough IgA, this supplement supports antibody levels in your gut so that you can bind on to bad guys and help push them out. The next one is turmeric. Turmeric is very important because if you've got an inflammatory process in your gut, this can help kind of calm things down and support a, whole, a normal healthy response in terms of inflammation. And then GI Soothe is a mixture of things like deglycerinized licorice, glutamine, aloe. These things coat and soothe the GI tract. So if you've got a hole blown in your gut and it's very inflamed, this can be very, very helpful at kind of a accommodating your recovery. And then the last but not the least is Detox C. This is a very high potency corn-free vitamin C powder. And, and studies show that vitamin C, when, when a person is trying to recover, especially celiac, so if you're celiac, when you're trying to recover from that gluten-induced damage over years, that some studies show that, that people don't recover unless they have adequate vitamin C. So that's part of why it's on that priority list of supplementation that I recommend if you're trying to overcome this problem. What's to do next? Subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, look, we got videos coming out every day that are going to help you navigate different health topics, including ones like leaky gut. And if you don't already like our page, um, then make sure you hit the like button as well. This is Dr. Osborne, founder of Gluten Free Society, author of No Grain, No Pain, wishing you excellent health. And I uh, hope you have a next, uh, great day. We'll see you in the next video.